Batman is a superhero who needs no introduction. His iconic bat suit is known throughout the world, as is his character. And as we all know, Batman has no superpowers. But unfortunately, a lot of his rogues gallery do have superpowers, as do most of the villains that the Justice League face on a semi-regular basis. And as such, Batman is sometimes outmatched in terms of power. Now, normally his fighting skills, gadgets and intellect can beat most enemies, but every once in a while he faces such overwhelming power that he needs a little extra help. And since this is Batman we're talking about, he of course has advanced bat suits to wear when this happens. Now these bat suits do vary as they are all built for different purposes, but they essentially give him the edge that he needs in a fight to win the day. Now, this list is going to focus solely on animation, both animated DC TV shows and animated DC films. This list does not consider any of the bat suits in the live action films and the comics. We're also not counting the gigantic mecha suits, as these are not really bat suits. To be a bat suit, it has to basically be an exoskeleton suit, not a Gundam wing suit, at least for this video. And with that being said, let's get to it. Number 6. The Thrasher Bat Suit. In the film Batman vs Robin, Batman is investigating the Court of Owls, which is a criminal organisation that has been in Gotham for centuries, and the members are formed of the most richest and most powerful people in Gotham. And when it comes to rich and powerful in Gotham, Bruce Wayne is very much near the top of that list, and so the Court of Owls tries to recruit him, unaware of the fact that he is Batman. Bruce Wayne leads them on at first, pretending to want to join, but actually he intends to investigate them further and bring them all down. I can't say I'm not intrigued by the offer. But I'd like some time to think it over. However, this all goes wrong when the Court of Owls realizes that Bruce Wayne is Batman. That means Wayne is... Batman. And instead of recruiting him, they decide to simply kill him. Now, the enforcers of the organization are called Talons, and they are a kind of mix between super soldiers and zombies. Basically, the Talons are kind of the undead, as they undergo a process that makes them immortal, and seemingly unable to feel pain. However, they have to return to a pod every 24 hours to keep this power, or they die. Immortality. But only 24 hours at a time. And that's only with the good Talons. With the Talons that have gone badly on this procedure, they have to return within 8 hours, or else this happens. Now the Court of Owls has hundreds of Talons stored at their headquarters from the past few centuries. The Talons are called out to perform a task, and then put back in the pod until they are needed again. Much like the Winter Soldier in the MCU films. However, when the newest Talon goes rogue and kills what appears to be the entire Court of Owls, although I'm sure there are some still sticking around somewhere, this Talon then decides to attack Batman with every other Talon that he has. Now the Talons are extremely skilled and outnumber the Bat family considerably. And when the Talons attack the Batcave en masse, Batman, Nightwing and Alfred are swarmed and overrun. Fortunately, Batman has been working on the Thrasher Batsuit. Now this Batsuit is designed more for survival than combat. It's literally made so that nothing can get to Bruce Wayne while he wears it. And the suit is actually capable of manufacturing oxygen for Bruce for up to several weeks if need be. And it can survive nearly anywhere on the planet, from extremely high temperatures to extremely low temperatures that would kill a normal human instantly. And of course, it's built for beating the holy hell out of Batman's enemies. Not only does this suit protect Batman and give him super strength, but it also can emit electromagnetic pulses, fires cryogenic batarangs, and electrostatic needles. And without it in this film, Batman would undoubtedly have been overrun by the Talons, and he, Robin, Dick Grayson, and Alfred would all be dead. So it's good that he had this suit on standby. And though the suit was eventually destroyed, it did do its job, and protected Bruce Wayne from both the physical threats and the extreme cold, as the Talon's weakness is extremely cold temperatures. Bring that setting up. Too cold and they'll shatter like glass. So though the Talons are all dead from the cold, the suit actually kept Bruce Wayne alive inside of it. Unfortunately, this suit was then destroyed when the last Talon drove the Batmobile into it. Yes, the suit was already damaged by the many talons, but still, that's not very tough in terms of bat suits. Yes, in the real world, that would destroy any exoskeleton suit, but in comics, the bad guys punch a lot harder than a car driving into it, hence why it's in the last place. Number 6. The Batbot Suit 
In the series The Batman, Batman encounters Bane for the first time, and much like the first time Batman faced Bane in the comics, he got the crap beaten out of him. Though in the comics, Batman has his back broken, but in the show, his back doesn't seem to break, but he does still have a lot of other broken bones, and he can barely move. You have broken bones? You may be bleeding internally. You need serious medical attention, Master Bruce. No. Hospitals. And even though this is the case, Batman still has to beat Bane, as he now essentially has control of Gotham and can do as he likes. The police can't handle Bane. Neither, apparently, could the Batman. So since Batman can't even walk, he figures the only course of actions that he has is to build an exoskeleton. So that's what he does. Even with Alfred desperately trying to stop him so that he has time for his injuries to heal. This gets so bad that Alfred even goes so far as refusing to help him. But Batman continues on anyway, and eventually Alfred is forced to help, if only to stop Bruce Wayne from injuring himself further while he builds the Batsuit. And when the Batsuit is finally done, Batman is able to use it despite his injuries, as of course it was designed so that he could use it in this state. And of course he is also able to take down Bane with it. And any suit that can take down Bane, who is arguably the strongest Batman villain in terms of super strength, is a Batsuit that is bloody powerful. And I would say this seems more powerful than the Thrasher suit, both in super strength terms and in terms of the damage that it can take, as it's able to take some Bane-powered fists. Number 4. The Batman Beyond Suit The TV series Batman Beyond is set in the future, in a world of super sci-fi technology, quite a lot of which has actually been invented as the years have gone by. But as the years have gone by, Gotham may have become a lot more advanced, but Bruce Wayne's body is deteriorating. It's a combination of old age and all the injuries he took fighting supervillains. And this of course is combined with the high levels of training that he underwent to be Batman. And all of this has taken its toll on him. Basically, Bruce Wayne is old and is struggling to beat up the bad guys like he once did. So to compensate for this, he builds the Batman Beyond suit. It's an armoured suit and enhances the wearer's strength by around 10. Synaptic controls, neuromuscular amplification, flight capability. <laughs> this thing might be old, but it's still cutting edge. It has jetpacks and flight capabilities, and batarangs that spring from the wrist and hands of the suit. The suit also has spy tech enabling Batman to listen in on criminals, and it has a headset that records everything he does, and is able to help him see over great distances that human eyes can't see, and it's also capable of seeing into the different light spectrums, much like Superman can. And to top all of it, it has a stealth mode that makes Batman practically invisible. And although the raw strength of this suit is not as great as some of the others on this list, it has other features that more than compensate for this. Firstly, it's made of future tech, and so it's much more advanced than the other suits on this list. And it's still a very powerful bat suit, as power isn't just measured in terms of raw strength. And the other reason is because the suit is not designed for just one purpose. Most of the suits on this list are for one specific enemy, such as fighting Bane or fighting Superman, whereas this suit is designed for Batman to continuously wear it day in and day out as he is on patrol, meaning that this bat suit is possibly the most versatile on this list, and is definitely the best all-round suit that is capable for most fights, which makes it pretty powerful. Number 3. Old Bruce's Batman Beyond Exoskeleton now, in the TV series Batman Beyond, even though Bruce Wayne makes that suit to help him fight criminals, he still eventually is forced to retire. He does this because of his heart. He had a heart palpitation once when saving a hostage, and then he collapsed and got beaten up pretty bad by the kidnappers. And in the end, he had to use a gun to stop them. And as we all know, Batman hates guns. So Batman decided it was time to retire, because he'd rather retire than have to resort to using guns to enforce justice. Never again. However, he does come out of retirement to help save the new Batman, Terry McGuinness. He saves him from a supervillain by wearing an even more powerful Batsuit exoskeleton. Unfortunately, it puts a lot of pressure on his heart. So when he wears this suit to save Terry McGuinness, although it does make him super strong and quite capable in a fight, it nearly gives him a heart attack. But it is made clear that this suit is even more powerful than the normal Batman Beyond suit, though not as practical as the everyday suit as it's quite big and it's quite tough to use. Now personally I think the normal Batman Beyond suit is better, but the larger one is definitely the more powerful out of the two. And again, it's made of much more advanced tech than most of the suits on this list. Now do you believe me about why I retired? 
Not entirely, but tonight I'm glad you didn't stay retired. Number two, the Dark Knight suit. Now, this bat suit was designed to make Batman strong enough to take out Superman. Now, in the film, both the live action and the animated films, Batman actually depends on gadgets and kryptonite to win the fight. He does this because although this is a great suit, it's not really a match for Superman in terms of strength, as Superman is practically godlike. That being said, it is still incredibly strong, and it did manage to take Superman's blows without being destroyed. And even though Superman is holding back, it's still very impressive that it doesn't break apart under his strength, as other exoskeletons have in the past. You don't deserve to live! The Batsuit also has an electrical attack and jet boots built into it. And the super strength that it provides is incredible, as Batman is able to casually pick up the Batmobile without any visible sign of effort, which makes it one, if not the, most powerful Batsuit that he has in animation. Batman also manages to bruise Superman and cause his jaw to swell up, something which next to no one has ever done before, but thanks to the strength of the suit, he's able to injure Superman this much. Again, Batman was partly able to do this because of the kryptonite, but it's still impressive that he managed to do it. And the only reason this suit fails is because Bruce Wayne had a heart attack, which of course is all part of his plan as we all know. So technically he didn't lose the fight, instead he deliberately lost it to publicly fake his death. Funeral proceedings are underway today for Bruce Wayne. But the suit functioned perfectly, and since Superman is one of the most powerful people he's ever fought, and quite possibly the most powerful, after all this is Superman we're talking about, it's very impressive that the suit is able to last that long, and that's why it's ahead of all the others, except for one. Number 1. The Green Lantern Suit In an episode of the TV series Batman the Brave and the Bold, the Green Lantern Corps are defeated by Despero. And after this fight, there is only three Green Lanterns left on Oa, so Batman teams up with them to take down Despero. Now, Batman does want to wear the Green Lantern power ring, but the others say he can't as he hasn't been chosen to use their rings. I'm afraid one who's not of the core cannot wear the power ring. So instead, the three of them then somehow use their rings to give him a Green Lantern bat suit. It seems to have all the powers of a Green Lantern giving Batman a protective spacesuit, allowing him to fly and to channel his willpower through it in much the same way as the Green Lanterns do with their rings. He basically becomes one of the Green Lanterns' ring slingers, if only for one episode. And of course, a Green Lantern power ring is considered the most powerful weapon in the universe, but that does depend on who's wearing it, as it is powered by an individual's willpower. And given how much willpower Batman has, he is one of the most powerful Green Lanterns to have ever lived. Now, unlike all the other suits on this list, it doesn't actually seem to boost his strength. I imagine it does to a certain degree, but we don't really see this in the episode. But it does have the near limitless power of the Green Lantern Corps behind it. But the main reason this is number one is that in all of the mentioned scenarios where Batman has needed a bat suit, he could have used this Green Lantern suit instead and still would have been able to win the fight, which just goes to show how much power this bat suit really has. Now, you could argue that the Dark Knight suit is better, and in terms of super strength, the Dark Knight suit probably will win. But in terms of raw power and armor protection, the Green Lantern suit is the most powerful, and enables Batman to do so much more than the Dark Knight suit and all the other suits on this list. It's all about will. Focus that, and there's no limit to what I, we, can do. I should also mention the Batwing suit. Now, this suit was originally designed for Batman, Though in the film, Batman Bad Blood, Batman never actually wears it, as it is stolen by Lucius Fox's son, Luke Fox. And then somehow it miraculously fits Luke, even though it wasn't designed for him. But we'll overlook that. And the Batwing suit is an amazing feat of engineering. It is capable not only of flight, but flight at great speeds. It gives the wearer super strength and of course protects them. It also has built-in laser blasters and a seemingly endless supply of batarangs. Now, in the film, Luke is able to fly it perfectly as soon as he puts it on, and will be generous to the writers and assume that this is because the suit was designed to be very intuitive and that Luke's army training helped give him the edge he needed to fly it perfectly. Now, exactly how powerful the suit is is hard to say, as we've not really seen it take down anyone super tough. But given its abilities, it seems like it could handle most supervillains, so long as the wearer is a skilled fighter. And it does have to be said that in many respects, this is very much like one of Iron Man's battlesuits. However, this bat suit is not part of this list, 
because although it was meant for Bruce Wayne in the film, and it was built by his company and with his money, Bruce Wayne never actually wore it in the film, and as far as we've seen, he never actually wears it at all. So technically it is a bat suit, but since he doesn't wear it, I've not included it on this list. But it does have to be mentioned because it looks great and it's pretty powerful. And that is the six most powerful bat suits featured in animation so far. Do you agree with the order of this list? Or do you think that there are others that should have been on this list instead? Be sure to let us know in the comments. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needlemouse Productions page on Patreon. Patreon is a crowdfunding site that is helping us to bring you more videos each week and to raise funds for adapting comic book stories into short animated films. If you're interested in donating or just want to find out more, a link is in this video's description. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.